Most of you arrived in cars today. I don't think anybody walked, right? Whose car did you come in? You came in hers. Oh, it's her car. Did anybody come in your own car or somebody else's? You came, you came in, in her car. <laughs> did you have to ask permission? Nobody drove their own car? Oh. Do you own your home or do you rent? Rent. Own. 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 <laughs> Anybody live with mom and dad? I think not. <laughs> Uh, whose clothes are you wearing? Yours or somebody else's? Are they yours? I think most of us would say we've got our own. And whose money's in the bank? Yours or somebody else's? We all do have money in the bank, don't we? And lots of money, yes. We are richly blessed. Yes. There's a little story in the Bible, and uh, I'm going to, it's on the back of your bulletin, but I'm going to sort of tell it. A young man came to Jesus, and he said, what good do I need to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? So Jesus gave him a list of things. That's always what we want, is a, is a nice list to work on. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Have you heard this before? It sounds familiar. We're not allowed to have it up in public places. But it, it's called the Ten Commandments. Some people think it's the Ten Suggestions. The young man, he thought for a moment and he said, but all these things I've already done. So what else is there? And Jesus said to him, since he could perceive the consciousness of the young man, sell all that you possess and give it to the poor. Um, Jesus, I'm having second thoughts about this kingdom of heaven stuff. Um, and then he didn't do it. He did not sell his possessions and he did not follow Jesus. Now I think in this story there's an operative word here. At least for me it seems to be the operative word. Sell all that you possess. What do you possess? Some of us say, well, we possess a home, we possess an automobile, we possess clothes, we possess a certain amount of money in the bank. Uh, some of us could say, well, we possess a lot of things. Don't we? No. You do not, po you do not possess anything. God says in the Bible, all the silver is mine, all the gold is mine. Thus says the Lord our God. We don't possess anything, not a thing. Back in the 70s, 
right after, uh, this is just a few months after graduation from the conservatory in Cincinnati, I got a job with a, with a bell company, you know, that sold carillon systems for churches uh, that play bell music over their, their bell towers. And I also did recording in the studio of bell music to be played uh, all over uh, the United States from churches. And uh, since I, I was working in and out of the, the studio, which was right across the street from the airport where I used to fly out of, that was kind of convenient. But uh, I was given a territory for selling these things in Michigan. So I would periodically have to go out of town and go up, go into Michigan and a couple of times even up into the Upper Peninsula. I went one time as far as Iron Mountain, which is all the way to the west side of Michigan and it touches the next state. And that's where I saw ice and snow in May. It was really exciting. Well, while I was, right after I left to go up into Michigan, my aunt, Corinne, had a heart attack. And so uh, she was in the hospital uh, recovering. I sent roses. She loved red roses, so I sent her a dozen red roses. And uh, she held on to them and held on to them. She wouldn't let, when they were wilted, she wouldn't let the nurses throw them out. She wanted them to be there when I got back. So when I got back and went to the hospital, there were these drooping black roses. They had turned black. She had tried so hard to possess them, to keep them forever. You can't. You can't. You can't hold on to anything forever. They're beautiful. They were beautiful. She got to enjoy the beauty of them. She got to smell the scent of them. But eventually, they go back to the universe. If we try to keep it long enough, they'll go back as dust. We can't possess our homes. You have a home now. And you say, you own it. You have a deed to it. I want you to keep it forever. You can't. Someday someone else will own it. Someone else will live there. You have clothes. But I've got proof for you that your clothes are already trying to go back to the universe. I just took a load out of the the dryer this morning. I saw my clothes in the lint filter. It's amazing how much your clothes disintegrate in the process. I mean, yeah, we, we can wear them, wear them till they have holes in them, and I've done that. I had a favorite uh, Pendleton robe that I just wouldn't give up. And finally at the end, when my fufun came out of the back end of it because it had worn so thin, <laughs> yeah, you can't keep it. And you want to see something going back to the universe really fast, put towels in your dryer. They make tons of lint because so much of your towel is dissipating every time you wash them. We can't possess our homes. What about our automobiles? How long are you going to be driving it? Uh, I used to have a, a Ford Explorer. Yeah. It sort of blew up. Well, needed a new motor. It was old by that time. 
uh, 13 years old, and when they said it'd be $5,000, and I'd already had the transmission replaced, yeah, and I wasn't sure about everything else. The, the best advice I got said, it's not worth it. Don't put a new engine in that. I mean, the inside was 13 years old. Uh, the driver's seat had wear through. Uh, the interior had wear. Everything else had wear. So I had to hunt for something to replace it. Eventually, it went to the crusher. And uh, I think I got $500 for it. You can't keep them forever. Would you want to still be driving your first car that you ever owned? My first car was a Renault 4CV that was a tiny, tiny, it looked like a Volkswagen. Black, of course, I think that was the only color it came in. Uh, the front two passengers were like small aircraft. You were shoulder to shoulder. The back seat hmm, was not only uncomfortable because it was thin and not much to it, but the fact that there was no leg room at all in that, that thing. It was a rear engine. That was kind of cool. Uh, oh, it was cute. But I wouldn't want to be driving that today. My goodness, when a truck went past you, you got blown off the, the highway. I wouldn't want to do that. It's a good thing these things it, evolve just as we evolve. Well, Greg, I've got a body. It's my body. Well, Charles Fillmore says we have no body of our own. It's God's body. And what's happening to it? Do you have the same body you were born with? No. I don't know. They say seven years, ten years, all the cells replaced. They're replacing themselves right now. When you leave here today, you're not going to be the same as when you walked in the door. Your body is renewing itself, changing. Do you look the same as when you went to kindergarten? No. It's all different. You're all different. All right, Greg, well, all right. If I don't have a body, at least I have my mind. What is that old quotation? A waste is a terrible thing to mind. No, it's a ter mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. But do you have the same mind you had when you were in kindergarten? In high school? In college? When you were 40, you're different. You've grown. You've evolved. You've changed. You don't even have the same mind. You don't have the same thoughts. You don't have the same feelings. You don't have the same beliefs. You can't keep your mind stuck and unchanging. I remember an event of some Christmases ago. It's quite a few years now. My, my mother's been gone for 19 years. But uh, they would come for Christmas, and many, some of you remember when my folks would come to, to uh, town for the holidays. I had in my house a beautiful antique pressed glass covered dish. It stood about this tall. And the, di the top part was about that deep, about that big around, then the pedestal and the foot. And the, it was moon and star. I loved that pattern. My grandmother had had it for decades. She bought it at an auction. And one time when I was visiting her from here, gone back. As I was getting ready to leave, she said, Greg, I know you like this. Take it with you. So my folks were visiting, and it was, it was on the dining room table, and they had candy in it, you know. And uh, 
And then after some afternoon, I heard a noise. My mother knocked it off the dining room table and it shattered. Oh, there were tears, absolute tears, but not mine. She cried. She apologized all over herself. I said, Mother, it's only glass. It was meant to be used. What good would that be in a china closet if all I, got, all I can do with it is look at it and dust it? It was to be enjoyed. We've enjoyed it. And its time is up. So don't think twice about it. I used to have some nice pieces of cut glass. And uh, I would use the cut glass for anything. I wouldn't have a problem feeding my cat in cut glass. Put potato chips in it. I'd who knows what all I put in it over the years. And then you know what I'd do with it? Right into the dishwasher. I've had people say, oh my God, Greg, it could break. I said, well, that's the nature of glass, isn't it? It could break me looking at it. But if it's in my house, and it's only to look at and to dust, it's not worth anything to me. It's to be enjoyed. What is all this stuff for? Why does all this stuff come into our lives? God provides it for us to use. I believed in using my cut glass. There's a quotation from Jim Freeman. Use what you have for what you have to use it for. It's like that line. <laughs> use what you have for what you have to use it for. It's amazing. I mean, when you think about that. I, uh, I had some really nice china back in the 60s. And uh, it wasn't my good china, it was my only china. And I used it for hot dogs, chili, eggs, everything. Spam, I'd put spam on it. My grandmother used to fix spam and eggs. Yeah, she was of the spam generation. Use it. Enjoy it. That's what your car is for. None of it's forever. Because it, like us, these things are evolving too. And they move through and they move on. Your mind has changed. Your body has changed. Your life has changed. Your house will change. Your car will change. But the core of you, that God-centered part of you, will always be whole, perfect, and free. Use what you have for what you have to use it for. How, how wonderful it is to do that. It's amazing. It's amazing how quickly things sometimes move through our lives. But they come to bless us. And they come to move on. So that same spirit, that spiritual awareness in us, like the spiritual awareness in the young, young ruler, the young man, it says to us, don't possess anything. 
Don't hold on to it. If you hold on to it and you possess it, you've got to take care of it. You've got to protect it so nobody steals it or nobody breaks it or hurts it or you don't lose it. You have to insure it. Use what you have. Enjoy it. That's what it's for. And know that all things are going to move along and change. You will have change in your life. Your mind will change. Your body will change. The people in your life will change. But you are an evolving child of God. So allow yourself to evolve because one of the challenges with possession, when you possess it, it then possesses you. Demands your attention. Think of all the, <laughs> I've used, the, I've told this story before. It was a, a lady I knew in Cincinnati. And uh, she actually bought a, a, a Victorian parlor set from me, you know, little, little small love, love seat and a, and a chair. Uh, it was mm, 18, 70s, 1880s, and uh, so I sold it to her, and then I, she needed me, I had a station wagon, to, to take it to her house. So I met her husband at her house and was led in, in, into it. Everything was covered in plastic. Sofa, the chairs, oh, everything was pristine. The carpet was covered in plastic. She had plastic runners with roadways you're supposed to take through the house. Her husband said, Greg, I can't sit on nothing. Does that sound like he was enjoying it? I don't think so. It says, this is the only one I will ever have. And I've got to keep this and keep it forever. So she made a museum out of her house so that nothing got dirty, nothing got used for what it was supposed to be used for. Oh, and nobody enjoyed it. I mean, I sat on the edge of, of the sofa. Actually, I wasn't on the sofa, I was on the plastic that was on the sofa. Yeah. Enjoy your life. Enjoy the things in your life. But don't possess them. Know that they're going to change. And when you know that, they don't possess you. So if you've got extra, give it away. If you've got a dress that you don't wear anymore, what's a dress for? To wear, isn't it? If you're not using it for that, just keeping a, a, a plastic bag in the closet filled with a dress, give it away. Give it to somebody who might enjoy it. Let go of these things because they're holding on to you. Just think, we have to keep buying bigger houses to keep putting more stuff in. Yeah. You've heard George Carlin's stuff talk that we have so much stuff and we take stuff with us on a trip. You go to a resort and you stay in a resort. You go through the stuff that you brought and you take some stuff out because you're going to do an overnight trip to someplace else. So you need some stuff to go with you. And along the way, you buy more stuff to take back to the stuff you have in the resort so that you can take all that stuff back to the stuff you have at home. That's pretty much bondage, isn't it? At least I think it is. There's only so much we can use. Use it. Enjoy it. Like my aunt's flowers. She enjoyed them. But she wanted them to last forever. And they don't. Remember that you're God's beloved child. You're a child of the universe. And when something leaves, when something 
You know, when your favorite, well, in my case, my favorite robe disintegrated, I had to realize that the universe was going to provide me with something equal or better. And it did. And it does. That, that Ford Explorer I have, oh, I thought I liked that. Till I replaced it with this Escape. I like this even better. And even though it's got some years on it, it's still a joy. I enjoy driving it. And when it's time, I'll enjoy whatever comes next. So, use your good stuff. Use your good dishes. Use what you have for what you need to use it for, to enjoy it, not just to keep it in a closet. If you've got stuff in a closet you haven't used in a long time, think about moving it along. Because that's also space in your mind. So, let go and let God provide you with what you need now, in this now moment.